with uh, with us every every game, uh, but also the guys that are doing a lot of the work behind the scenes. And you know, those are the guys that are so much for us, at least appreciated. Um, you know, the, I think it go a little unnoticed at times. Um, you know, Michael Banya, we call him Kenny because of Seinfeld, Kenny Banya, Amy. But anyway, my, Michael does such a great job, and you know, those guys put in so many hours. And, you know, right now, for example, we're preparing for three teams and just all the video work that goes into that, the long hours uh, that those guys are putting in, um, you know, our, our recruiting coordinator right now with things about to get crazy in, in that regard with Peyton Borders, with, uh, you know, Manuel Tommy, player personnel, you know, all the guys that are really helping, you know, get us to where we are at this point. So, you know, I'm just I'm proud of, of our program for where we are, but there's so many people that are responsible. Uh, you know, for all the awards that are given at this time of year with, you know, with Kese being recognized, with Rink being recognized, you know, I sure wish Juwan would have gotten, you know, some very much deserved defensive uh, player just, you know, with our numbers where they are, um, you know, but, you know, we're in a good place. I, I feel really good about things at this time. We just can't get complacent. We've got to stay hungry. We have to go into this with a, you know, it's a tough time because we have no idea who we're going to play. We're going to put different edits in our film session tomorrow and go through plays from all the teams that we might face on Friday. But, you know, the, right this time of year now is about, you know, a lot of mental preparation. We're adding actions, uh, you know, to try to maybe steal a basket, you know, much needed basket, working on situations, special situations at this time of year. But, you know, this is the fun time, as I've talked about with, what we have right now with all the blood, sweat, and tears you go through to get to this time of year to be playing meaningful games in March. And we put ourselves in a great position. And, you know, now it's about continuing to go out there and doing the same thing. We don't need to go out and reinvent the wheel. We just need to go out and do the same things that we've been doing that have made us a very successful basketball team these last six to eight weeks of the season. And going into this, I think winning seven of eight, and uh, you know, being in a good place, so I'm excited about it. It's uh, you know, this is what it's all about. You want to put yourself in a position to compete for championships, and you know, to get ourselves a double bye. Uh, you know, go go into Minneapolis. Um, you know, hopefully doing something that that the women's team did. You know, and using that as motivation. Uh, you know, for what they accomplished, and having a chance to you know beat the runner national runner up last year and losing in overtime. So, you know, it's just uh, it's a great time of year, and uh, I think our guys are ready for it. Well, I, yeah, I can promise you the number one guy that they talk about when they're facing us is what are we going to do with Kese? And it, he just demands so much attention. And he, he, the, the growth I've seen Kese, the most growth I've seen with him is his ability to move without the ball. And, you know, I thought at times our spacing was really good the other day against Michigan, which allowed him to get to the basket. I thought he set some really good random uh, screens. And when teams are up on him, he got Juwan a layup in transition. He uh, set a flare screen and slipped to the basket and got a layup. And he got to the basket multiple times, uh, you know, when we did a good job running to the corners, sprinting to the corners and getting our floor spaced early in the possession. Jawan found him twice, uh, you know, coming down to, to hit threes. And then he hits the dribble up three from the logo. You know, those aren't plays that we draw up. But, you know, when he gets it going and has those heat check moments, you know, we certainly live with those. Uh, with those shots. So, you know, it's just, it's fun to see, uh, you know, Casey get it going. And it's even more fun for a coach to see your guys hunting him and finding him. And that's what it's all about. And we've had multiple players that we've had that have had halves like that. You know, Bryce had a 20 point half. CJ has certainly had it going on multiple occasions to where the guys uh, find him rank in the Ohio State game. And when he hit six threes, Josiah, um, you know, in a, in a couple games. So, you know, when you have guys like that that get, that get it going, it's fun to see your team uh, find that where we don't have to call a play. They just go out there, and that's what we did against Michigan. We didn't run a lot of plays. We just kind of, it was a read and react uh, type system. And, and I thought our guys did a really good job of taking what the defense gave us that day. What does it take to win? in conference tournament play, not just the basketball aspect, but the attrition of potential back-to-back-to-back? -to -back -to -back. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of mental toughness. Obviously, you know, this week we have to make sure we're fresh going into it with the potential of what could happen. And, you know, when you look at the 8 o'clock game, and if you're fortunate enough to get by that one, the next game's at 2.30. 
that is a hell of a tough turnaround. I've never had anything like that. You know, we were fortunate to cut down the nets twice in Kansas City when we were at Iowa State, but you know, the games are spread out pretty pretty well, and you get 24 hours rest. Um, you know, so we're going in there, uh, you know, not knowing who we're going to play, potential to play three teams, all that pose different challenges and just go one at a time. I mean, that's certainly the mindset going into this. You can't look at, okay, who might we play in the championship? No, we got Michigan, we've got Penn State, or we've got Indiana on Friday evening. And then you go from there if you're fortunate enough to get by it. But, you know, this week, you know, from a preparation standpoint, I did listen to the sports science guys on this one because we have to be fresh going into uh, this first game on Friday night. Uh, mental toughness conversation. I know there's not a lot of NCAA tournament experience with this group, but what about it with the makeup and the, and the veteran leadership that these believe they're going to be able to handle just all that comes with postseason play? I think they've handled pretty much every situation we've been in very well, Robin. So, you know, it's just a matter of continuing on with that. And, and again, do, doing the things. We don't have to go out and do different uh, anything different than what we've been doing. Just continue on with what's made us a, a, a pretty damn good basketball team here uh, down the stretch. And, you know, it's we're going to play – really good teams from this point on. And, you know, it's about going out and preparing the same way that we have been. You know, our preparation has been on point with these guys, and you can tell by our defensive numbers with what they've been. And, you know, that that doesn't change. We have to defend. We have to rebound at a high level if we want to win at this time of year. And I'm confident our guys will continue on that just with the way they've prepared. Um, you know, it's listen, this is, this is the fun part. you got to enjoy the ride. I mean, it's a stressful – time more so for the coaches, but these guys have to enjoy the position that they put themselves in. They're going to remember uh, what they're about to embark on for the rest of their lives. I remember my first NCAA tournament uh, that I played in in Worcester, Massachusetts, and you know I'll never forget that win. Um, and then the opportunity to play Kentucky in the second round, which we lost 106 to 98, which defense wasn't optional <laughs> that, that game. But you know, it's, 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 the, it's what you prepare for. It's why you do this. It's why you play this game. It's why you coach in this profession is to have the opportunity uh, to do something special like, like we're about to come up on. How do you, how do you prepare for uh, three possible opponents coming in? Well, again, that's the behind the scenes work that, that everybody's working on right now with our assistant coaches, uh, with, with video, with our GAs. Um, you know, everybody has got an assignment on what they're due. We'll scout uh, the first game on Wednesday. We'll leave tomorrow to go up to Minneapolis, and we'll have a couple coaches at uh, – at the game. We'll have a team building activity tomorrow night. We'll uh, practice at the Timberwolves facility on Thursday, Thursday afternoon, getting ready for the Friday night game. We'll have a shoot around, um, I think at 9, 15 or 9.30 on the day of the game on Friday. So, you know, it's it, we've still got three days, um, you know, to prepare and, and we're going to look at all three teams and work on all three of their plays. We'll, we'll do a first look at uh, both teams tomorrow. We do have the benefit of just playing Michigan if it happens to be them. And, uh, you know, we did we Penn State with their pressure, you know, we'll have to work on our press break the next few days with Indiana and their size, and they're playing great basketball right now. We have to be ready for, uh, you know, to defend the post, to be ready to defend high-low actions. Uh, so, it's again, it's, it's three completely different teams. It's not like you're playing and preparing for two teams that are going to pound it inside. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a completely different prep. So we're going to have to be ready for whoever comes out of those first two games um, for Friday night. Yeah, it, it is. It, it will absolutely go down as one of my favorite teams. Last year is one of my favorite teams that, that we coached, even though we didn't have the opportunity to play in the postseason. You know, that was what was so devastating about losing that first game in um, in Chicago last year to lose to Minnesota is that took us out of whatever it was, NIT or the chance to play in the NCAA tournament because of how well that team uh, played and, and what they did to fight through adversity. You know, I'll always be grateful for that group. I was texting with Sam Greasel uh, earlier today, you know, and, and just, you know, told him, I'll always be grateful for the opportunity to coach you for what you did to help, uh, you know, flip the narrative here and build the culture that we want and what we're going to need in the future. And, you know, this team, the way that they've come in from day one, you know, it's, it's one of the most professional groups that I've had the opportunity to coach. Whatever role they have, you know, they come in here and play to the best of their ability and play the role to the best, you know, to be the best version of themselves. So, you know, it really has been a group that, you know, I've loved being around. Um, you know, they're they're coachable. They're, uh, you know, they, they're, I've talked a lot about this. They're on time. Um, 
and they play for each other. And, that, you know, that was one thing, you know, you have great opportunities over the course of the season. When Kevin McHale comes in, you know, one of the top players of all time, just saying how much fun our team is to watch because of how hard they play and they're in a defensive stance and they play for each other. It's great to hear that from a Hall of Fame player, top 50 player of all time, you know, when he recognizes that. So, you know, it's just a fun group to be around. And I really hope that, you know, we have the opportunity to come back here in 20 years and be recognized as the group that, you know, gave us the first opportunity, uh, you know, to win in, uh, in March. So, you know, it's just... Again, love being around them, and you know, it will always be a group I'll remember. Is, is there um, any value for your guys in, in recognizing that, that history and understanding um, the opportunity in front of them to be that first team? Yeah, I mean, we, we talk about it. You know, I mean, I'm, we're not going to run from it. And, you know, pressure is a privilege. I mean, you know, you, you put yourself in a position at this time of year to go out there and, and um, you know, hopefully do it. There's been some great teams in the history of. Nebraska basketball and you know I would put this group up there with some of those teams you know a lot of the teams I played against I mean those are some special special groups and anything can happen in March I mean we were a three seed and, and got beat in the first game of the tournament I mean that stuff happens I know it's happened here so you know we just have to prepare and, and go out there and again not get away from who we've been or what we've done so yeah we, we talk about it and you know the opportunity to do something special I mean you know, those guys were around. I made sure they were around when the uh, team that won the Big A championship was here in the Northwestern weekend. I'm, I made sure our guys were around them, and they had really good conversations with those players. And just to see the reception that that group got, you know, if you take it to the next level, you know, what, what potentially, you know, when these guys come back for hopefully reunion, whenever that is, you know, be, to be recognized. But, you know, we've still got work to do, obviously. And, you know, we're going to continue to pre pre prepare at a high level. I can promise you that. And, uh, and hopefully go out there and make this a group and a program that has the chance to have sustained success and be a winning program. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get there. Trent, you've got success in conference tournaments for, from a basketball standpoint, what do you got to do really well? Well, at this time of year, you have to defend and uh, and you have to rebound and you have to take care of the ball. I mean, everything that we've talked about with the group this year, the keys don't change. You know, you just have to go out there and, and again, you know, the old mantra, one at a time, that's, that's what it's all about at this time of year. And, you know, don't ever, you know, there was one year we beat Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, and we were down double digits to all three teams in the second half and came back and, you know, cut the nets down after beating Kansas in the final. So, you know, you just got to go out there and, and continue to battle and grind. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I hope we have a great crowd up there in, in Minneapolis. Um, you know, it sounds like our ticket allotment has, has gone pretty quickly. So, you know, it's, I think the fans recognize this group and how special they can be and, and what they've done. And, uh, you know, now it's up to, up to us to, uh, to continue on with that. Yeah, right away. Sure, sure, right away. Uh, you know, Luca Virgilio is a huge part of, of, of us getting rank. And, you know, it's um, then you go in and you do a, a home visit. We flew to Peoria and met with him. And uh, once we got him to campus and showed him how we were going to play and how we were going to use him, you know, I, I think he fell in love with the system. So, you know, yeah, as soon as he went into the portal, we were on him. And, you know, again, when you have players like that in the open spread offense that can make a shot and make a play, you know, it's a really good system for them. And then his rebound ability is, um, you know, ability to make a, a play for a teammate has, uh, has been awesome for our team. So, yeah, we were fortunate. We were lucky to get rank and, and certainly happy to have him on our team. Pickering, you talked about Iowa State a little bit. What, and they're projected widely to be playing maybe in Omaha uh, next week. What's, what's maybe a characteristic of that fan base that travels? And then is there a memory or two that comes to mind for you as a player or as a coach where you saw it? Travel make a difference. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you look at uh, you know, the conference tournament as a player, you know, back in the old Big Eight at Kemper Arena, it was always Kansas Iowa State. You know, when and we were fortunate to have those matchups a lot. And then when we played them in the Big Twelve tournament final, it was half Iowa State, half Kansas. I mean, that place. Um, you know, Amy, you know, you were there. I mean, it's 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 awesome. You know, when when you have your fan base, uh, you know, that travels like that. And, you know, we listen, we had a good showing in Michigan. I was really pleased with, with our fan base. Uh, you know, you hear the Go Big Red, um, you know, going on on the road. You know, that's huge for, 
you, a lot of times you say, hey, the, the 15 guys on the bench, that's all we got. You know, when you have a group there uh, pulling for you, that, that makes a big difference. So, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm hoping we have a good following up in uh, Minneapolis. But yeah, those, I guess, Big 12 tournaments that we coached in, that, you know, we were fortunate enough to win, uh, our fans at Iowa State played a huge part in that. Thanks, guys. You know, I'm so happy about it too. But you know, we our our job is not done yet. So you know, we, we got a big ten big, big ten tournament coming up this week, and then we got you know obviously the match month is coming up too. So we just gotta you know keep playing hard. I just gotta do what I do to help the team to win the win, you know win the game. So I just gotta keep playing. Like, I usually. Did you watch a lot of NCAA tournaments back home growing up? Uh, I think a little bit, but I wasn't watching like I I couldn't watch like. From Japan when I was young, so I didn't watch as much, but I watched a couple of times like high rise stuff, stuff you know, when, when I was in Japan too, yeah. But you know what that stage is, and just kind of what the opportunity that presents to be able to play. Yes, I think I know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess what does that mean to you to be able to have that opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament? You know that you know that 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 is also like one of my goal to you know come to the U.S. to play match Madness. So I'm super excited about it. Too. You know, we just gotta keep playing hard. You know, to you know. To, uh, so we don't have to regret about it, you know, after like, in my future. So, yeah, I'm so excited about it. Okay, so with Fred being named co-Big Ten Coach of the Year, just comment on what he's done for you and your career and how meaningful that's been to you. You know, like, I, I've been praying for him for three. This is this is my salary year prayer for him. You know, he's done such an amazing job. Even, like, on, off court, like, both of them, like, you know, he's he deserved it, you know. I'm so happy for him to get the, you know, Coach of the Year, too. How have you seen, uh, Coach has talked a lot about kind of the culture shift over the past years. How have you seen the culture evolve since you've been here? Yeah, I think we built a culture, like, especially last year, like, especially end of the season, like, and then we, I think we keep continue, you know, to what we had the last year, like, to this year, so I think our culture is, you know, it's been a lot, you know, better, you know, I think, yeah, I don't know how to say it, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, for you right now. Rick got recognized as well uh, mm -hmm. with the All Big Ten stuff. What, what's he meant to this team? You know, since he's joined on. You know, he he's done he's done a lot of things for us, like like offensively, defensively, everything. Like he helps us, he help us a lot. So you know, he deserved that. You know, he deserved that too. So yeah, I'm happy happy for him too. You know, and then we got a, you know, couple more games to play with. I I got a couple games with to play with him. So. You know, it's like so. Uh, how are you able to elevate your game uh, this year individually? Uh, you know, I think I my most improvement thing is from last year is, you know, attacking the basketball to you know to the basket, like cutting you know keep cutting the keep keep cutting the bas you know to the basket, like also like I you I I think I play with the, like on ball stuff more than last year too, so I think that's uh, like offensive stuff that I improved from last year. I think. What was what was Michigan's defense giving you the other day? Because it looked like you were attacking the basket more than uh, than, than usual. Yeah, we were also talking about the Michigan scouting. That they are super physical, they are super athletic, but they are not like great feet on the defense. So like you know, if you have a if you have to if you have the space, you know, if you find the space that like, you you can keep, you you can go attack to if you eat. So we were talking about that like, even before the game. So I was you know doing that like when I have a chance to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. It's uh, it's, it's always pretty cool if you get individual awards. Uh, it's always an honor for sure. What uh, I mean, seeing coach get co-coach of the year, mm -hmm. Casey get second team, you third team. I guess what was was this kind of a, a icing on what had been a really good season? Or was it just kind of like the um, stuff at all? I mean, I've been around quite a bit, so I know that if you do well as a team, then individual awards kind of come with that. So 
I'm especially really happy for Coach that he got uh, Coach of the Year, and then uh, me and KC getting the, uh, like all Big Ten teams. That's just, I mean, we've we've been playing well all all season, so that's kind of just, yeah, I guess, icing on the cake. Not really. Um, I'm just focused on on the team right now, because if we keep continuing uh, to do well as a team, then other individuals things will come along with that. Frank, uh, going into the conference tournament, just what does it take um, to win in a conference tournament, not just basketball-wise, but in the attrition element of possibly playing back-to-back-to-back mm-hmm. days? Uh, well, first of all, you got to play the best three games that you have all year. Like We've been very good this season so far, but if we want to win this thing, then we got to play our three best games this weekend. Um, winning a conference tournament is tough. Uh, last year I was close with my old team. We made it to the final, so um, I I know what it takes to like m- taking care of your body because three games in three days can be really tough, and every single game will be will be a war. Uh, Big Ten is very physical, so uh, we got to be ready. This this week we've been doing a good job of mixing rest and uh, practice together. Uh, coaching staff and athletic trainers and just the whole staff in general has been really good the whole season, uh, making sure that we get the right amount of rest but also the right amount of practice to, to be ready to perform. So um, it's good that it doesn't have to be uh, – we have to figure it out for this one weekend. We've been very consistent with it all year. So I, I have confidence that our bodies will be be ready to go on Friday. Frank, what do you think of your draw uh, of the potential three opponents you would face on Friday? You've played all of them within the past month. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to draw, I think we match up with some teams better than others, obviously, but uh, all teams in the Big Ten are good. Um, whoever we would have faced as the six seed or even the 11 or 14 seed, like everybody in the Big Ten is able to to make a run. So um, uh, it doesn't really matter to me who we draw. Uh, we knew we were... Gonna, we're going to be in for a, for a good game, and they're going to give us our best shot, their their best shot, and we got to give them our best shot. Um, so, yeah, draw doesn't really matter to me. We just got to play our best basketball. What is it about this group that gives you confidence going into the postseason? That not just the the physical part of it, playing multiple games, in multiple days, but mm-hmm. the mental toughness aspect of it. What what gives you confidence that this group is going to be able to handle that? Um, well, mainly because we have a lot of experienced guys. We have a lot of guys that have been in college multiple years, and everybody plays their conference tournament, and uh, a lot of guys have been in a lot of conference tournaments. So uh, just the experience in general, um, I think that will definitely help, and like guys know what they're in for. So that will, that will be good, and we can share that with the young guys, even though we don't have that many guys in our rotation that – haven't been to a conference tournament. I know that Jamar has only played one conference tournament game in his career, but uh, I think we have enough experience on this team to be able to to help those guys and kind of uh, tell everybody what they need to know and need to be ready for. Obviously, you want to keep your edge, but Fred talked about enjoying the ride. Too. Mm-hmm. How much do you want to stay present with that too, enjoying the experience of what's going to be happening? Um, I think it's just really fun to play meaningful basketball in March. Um, that's always your goal throughout the whole year. That's what you work towards. Um, so it's it's pretty fun that we get to actually do that uh, this time around. Uh, practice today was a lot of fun. We saw a lot of smiles in practice today. And I just hope that that can carry on. Because if, if you love the game and you give it your all, then uh, the game can give you a lot back too. When you had the, the, uh, the procedure in December, were you worried about holding up over these last few months, or how, how difficult has that been to um, just become that now? Just in general, with the setbacks that I had this year, with what's like what happened early in the year, with having to wear the mask and then the knee procedure, and kind of having to struggle with that throughout the whole Big Ten conference uh, play. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very thankful that uh, I've been able to play every game, and um, it's been a struggle, but. It definitely went well when that procedure happened. I was definitely kind of worried about what would happen towards the end of the conference season, but uh, now just very 
thankful how this season has gone and how it's played out for me. Hey, Rick, when it comes to Coach Horberg, back to him for a minute and his award, I mean, what, what stands out about him as a coach? Is it his X's and O's, his personality, the way he treats you? Like, when you think of Fred Horberg, what do you think of? Um, first of all, great basketball mind. Like, especially uh, when you talk about X's and O's, he's one of the best in the game. Um, he's, his professional approach uh, in preparation to games and during games, like you rarely see him uh, get sped up or like buy into the chaos. He's always a, a calm rock that, uh, I mean, games have a lot of ups and downs. There's a, it's an emotional roller, co roller coaster, but he's always very, very steady throughout the game and that calms the, uh, calms the guys down and gives us confidence. Um, and we know that if we, when we walk out of a timeout, he'll give us a play that we're most likely going to score off of and just get back rolling again. Fred said this is one of his favorite teams he's ever coached mm -hmm. in his career group. How much fun just have you had with these guys this year so far? Um, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, how I think Coach alluded to saying how there hasn't been that many distractions off the court. This, that's definitely true. Like This group has been great with just being good guys and being focused on what we need to do and being dialed into practice on the court, but off the court, just not getting into any trouble and just uh, making sure that everybody stays healthy and stays ready to go. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun with these guys. Like Even Sometimes you got to relax and take a step back from the game and just hang out with your teammates and just be normal college students. And um, I think we've found the right balance in that for sure. As a follow-up to that, uh, he has coached a ton of NBA players mm -hmm. and a lot of really talented guys, and yet this is one of his favorite teams. What does that mean to you? Um, that's a pretty special compliment, especially with the teams that he's been around, uh, for him to call us is one of his favorite teams that you know, it's, it's, it's a good compliment. It's a nice compliment to get. Frank, what have you seen from Josiah these past two games? It really seems like he's yeah. ramped things up. He's, he's been amazing. He's he's really gotten better throughout the whole season, and he's playing his best basketball right now, which is exactly what you want like this time of year to play your best basketball. So, yeah, these past two games, he's been enormous for us, and I mean, I, I love it when he, he when he puts up games and puts up numbers and helps the team in every little bit the way he's been doing. Like no, I I love seeing it. Frank, does it feel a little bit different? You know, you're entering postseason and you guys will play beyond this week no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. Is there a little bit of extra energy in the gym? Or um, how do you describe how you around the team? Uh, it's personally it's new for me. I've never been in a situation to receive an at large bit so. It, before it was always going into the conference tournament, that's like the big moment. Obviously, it's still big, but it's also nice that uh, we already are sure of that this won't be our last game. Because if you know it potentially could be your last game, that it can be filled with a lot of emotions. Um, but now we can just focus on the game plan, focus on playing hard and doing the right things, and you don't have to worry about the emotional side of things. So that's uh, great relief, and I think that puts everybody more in, in focus with uh, the game plan and just playing as best as we can. At what point did you realize this team could be good enough to be an NCAA tournament team? Um, pretty much right when I when I walked in here. Uh, obviously, when you when you commit and you kind of keep looking around, okay, which other guys can we bring in? And Casey coming back was huge. Um, but once you walk in and you kind of see the talent that walks around the gym, I like I saw pretty much right away. Hey, we we got some guys here. We we got some talent here. Yes, we got picked 12th in the preseason, but I think we can do better. <coughs> Me personally, before the season, I said we should be able to play in the top five in the Big Ten, and we've been able to do that and uh, even exceed that expectation. So. Um, no, I'm happy that that played out the way it did. So like the first like summer workout, is that what you're saying? Yeah, you pretty much. The team's resume speaks for itself, but those two wins over Purdue and Wisconsin, I mean, you know, not only do you guys belong, but you know, you really could go out and win this thing. You know, talk about those two wins, how they're going to help you guys out this week. Um, there's been a lot of talk of us obviously not winning that many games away from Pinnacle Bank Arena. Um, 
we got that little uh, thing off our shoulder with getting two road wins now. Uh, but yeah, we've we've shown that we can play with the best of them, and and even uh, on the road at Illinois, going into overtime, that that definitely gives us a lot of confidence that we can we can play with the best teams in this conference and even in this country. Then yeah, it gives us a lot of confidence going into this. But still, we gotta take care of the first game on Friday. Can't look ahead too far. It's just one game at a time, and um, yeah, whoever we face on Friday, we'll be ready for. Yeah, that's a that's a late one. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of uh, stretching and meditation and stuff with Kurt. Uh, that's worked so far on the road. We kind of started with that at Indiana, so I'm sure Coach will Coach will have us do that again. Anything else, Rick? Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, guys. You guys.